Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. This bulletin is coming to you live from our studios here at Kukumlimle in Accra on digital address GA0993341 on Joy 99.7 FM. is also live on Love 99.5 FM in Kumase, affiliates across the country on ABN Radio in London and around the world at myjoyonline.com. The news is brought to you by Telesol 4G. Just a touch. Coming up. A tale of two mousies, a baby named Mousy who has been safely returned to his parents, and a baby thief, Mousy, who police have charged with child stealing and conspiracy. With a suspect by name Mousy Rose, their boyfriend is lost in Latin, custody. We'll be live in Takradi and hear from the police as the suspect and her accomplice are held in custody. Chairman of the Road Safety Advocates Ghana accuses Transport Ministry and GPRTU of lack of commitment to addressing road crashes in the country as he claims they are disinterested in de deploying technology to alert sleepy drivers. I've got a solution for fatigue. There's a cap that you put on that monitors your brain. The moment you get a micro sleep, the sensor will pick it up. It will beep. Beep, 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 beep. Minister of Transport was not interested. Meanwhile, Speaker of Parliament justifies the House's decision to pay respect to victims of disasters in New Zealand and South Africa while ignoring the over 70 victims of the Kintempo accident. The leadership were there that she must be the appropriate person to lead the statement of this. And that was not out of this honorable house, not being mindful of the circumstances. As National Peace Council prepares to announce venue and dates for much anticipated meeting on disbanding militias, President Ekofado reiterates vow to ensure an end to political party militias, arguing that it is a fight that must be won. Come what may, we will rid our country of some of these phenomena. We don't need it in the new Ghana that we're trying to build, that people use force to determine the politics and the decision-making of our nation. We don't need it. And in sports... Now, chairman of the Ghana League Clubs Association is asking referees to use this special competition scheduled to start this weekend to redeem their image after what happened in Anas expose. And later, as we continue our Ghana Man series, we'll put the spotlight on Akan names with the God Factor. Perhaps gospel singers Esther Nyameche, Uraba Nyameche are reflective of their names. We have all that and more coming up in this edition of the Midday News here on Joy 99.7 FM with me, MFA Apau. The entire community in Takradi have been thrown into a state of frenzy after one-year-old Francis Mousi Ahiabenu, who was allegedly stolen at the Takradi market, popularly known as Market Circle, was found. The boy had been gone for four days, a situation that left the family in agony. But this dawn, the Western Region Police found the baby in the home of one Rose Mousi Fiaku and the boyfriend. We already understand that the suspects have been charged with child stealing and conspiracy. Uh, let's get details on this very important story. My colleague Inathalia Kwanza joins us on the line. So Ina, obviously this news is very exciting for all of us. You've been speaking uh, to the mother of this boy. What has she been telling you? Yes, yeah, so for the mother, basically she's learned a lot of lessons from what has happened. So she told me that um, even with her family members, she would be very careful with um, handing, handing over her children to them. And then she's so much grateful to the media, the public, and the police service with the swift effort they took in, in bringing back this boy. Because yesterday they stood at the field Kuma for seven hours. There had to be a reinforcement team from the SWAT and all that. And, and he thinks they have done so much that he can't even say thank you enough. I am very grateful to everyone who prayed for me to help me find my son. 
It was actually a good Samaritan that helped us find this baby. I am very excited. I thank everybody. So that's a uh, baby mousey's uh, mother there. But you know, uh, we know that Rose Mousey Fiaku is one of the suspects and the boyfriend. Uh, what's the name of that boyfriend and what do they actually do? Okay, so Rose uh, Mousey Fiaku is the seamstress. And for the boyfriend, whose name has been given as Lawrence Tete, is a mason. Rose is 42 years, and the boyfriend is 33 years. Aina, how did the police find this boy? I'm very interested. Did they tell you? Yes. Um, so I've been speaking to the SC Olivia Rabna Deku, and she says that so the police had a tip of just like Baby Mousey's mother was saying, a woman who had seen the CCTV footage said she knows a woman just like that, but she would, she's afraid to take them there. So she would just give them the guidelines as to how to get them. So yesterday, 7 a.m., they paraded at the vicinity, that is the Kiyokuma, and then for seven hours, they were just monitoring grounds. They were gathering their intelligence. So it was at 10 p.m., that they, they went to the slum. The police had information, okay. very credible information, that the suspect had been spotted somewhere around. Uh, you know, so they had to be surveillance from 7 p.m. yesterday, the which they surveillance, and then around 12 a.m. they were able to get there. And initially, when they got there, uh, she wasn't there, so they had to still wait. After some time, they had a baby crying in the room. So they had to force her to the baby came out. And initially, she was denying that she had a baby. Uh, through much interrogation, uh, we found out that the baby was in the room together with the boyfriend. We were able to rescue the baby and reunite the baby with the family. Uh, the now, that's um, the PRO for the Western Region Police, Olivia Rabna Adiku. Now, Ina, uh, they've been charged with ch child stealing and conspiracy. Did the police mention when they will be arraigned? Uh, she said hopefully um, ho this today or tomorrow. So we are waiting for a call for her to confirm when they will be arraigned before court. And that's our Western Regional Correspondent in Natalia Quenza. Thank you very much. She's been following this uh, from the very onset till that baby was found. Some good news there. But let's we, lest we forget, um, it's been 222 days since Prisla Blessin Bentum, the first of the three females believed to, to have been kidnapped in Takrade, disappeared. The second, Ruth Love Quasing, has been gone for 113 days, whilst the third, Prisla Mansibia Crunchy, uh, has been missing for 96 days. Um, in Natalia Quenza, I'm sure is still with us, but we can hear from the police on what uh, they've been able to do regarding this case. There are two isolated cases. You cannot compare kidnapping to child stealing. But you also realize that with the kidnapping uh, issue, is a transnational uh, organized crime. So it is not just easy to even know who actually is involved. Uh, police had to go through a lot, even to be able to arrest someone who don't take worse. Uh, it took us a long time to even get to know who exactly is behind it. So we are still working on it, and if, if you listen to what has happened now, if we get the needed information very early, timely, it will always help us in our investigation. Please, the BNI is handling the case. And the campaign is on, on our, it's our social media campaign uh, to, on the hashtag Bring Back Our Tardy Girls. <laughs> Sadness for the parent. Well, I am not sad. Mine is anger. And I expect you to be angry. The kind of anger that will make state agencies act swiftly as they should. In the meantime, we're still looking for the girls. Imagine waking up one morning with a dream, with a hope. Maybe you just want to live your life. And then sometime during the day, somebody just kidnaps you and all these dreams are extinguished. We need your help. 
These are three mothers looking for three daughters. We need to find our girls. Bring back our tardy girls. Bring back our tardy girls. And it's the hashtag bring back our tardy girls. You're still listening to the midday news here on Joy 99.7 FM. Now, Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Quay, has justified the House's decision not to pay respect to victims of the Kintampo accident yesterday as it observed minutes of silence for victims of disasters in New Zealand and Southern Africa. Scores of people were killed in New Zealand after a gunman stormed a mosque. And in Mozambique, more than 700 have been killed after a cyclone that ravaged an entire township bearer. We'll hear from the Speaker shortly. But first, listen to a BBC report on how rescuers are having a challenge bringing survivors to safety. It was absolute, absolute chaos. Water as far as you can see. The decision was made at the time to save all women and children and the elderly. The parents and moms were throwing the children at rescuers. When we returned the next day to look for the adult males and some of the older boys, unfortunately they were swept away. So that was the report. But yesterday, a minute silence was observed for the dead here in Ghana's parliament. And not forgetting that um, we also had some lives lost over the weekend through an accident on Kintampo and in Cape Coast. Nothing was said about that. Well, the speaker, Professor Michael Kui, says the House was waiting for the MP of the area to return from a fact-finding visit to the area to deliver a statement on the issue. person to lead a statement on this in this honorable house. And that was not out of this honorable house on the road as involving the two houses at Amokro in the Kintampo South District. It has come to my attention that some members of the public have wondered why there was no statement of this tragedy yesterday in this honorable house at the time when we had talked about some tragedies elsewhere it's very useful to have a parliamentary press call if the media will engage them on such matters before relevant reportage <laughs> because we had good reason yesterday the honorable member who had already filed um, a statement had to be outside the house because of what had occurred in her constituency and the leadership were agreeable that she must be the appropriate person to lead a statement of this in this honorable house and that was not out of this honorable house not being mindful you heard that the Speaker of Parliament, now Kintampo North MP Felicia J is calling on government to declare three days of national mourning over the deaths. Mr. Speaker, myself and my colleagues, Honorable Jose Atubonde, MP Kintampo North, and Honorable Albert, MP for Guaru Constituency, visited the accident scene on behalf of the Minority Caucus in Parliament on Saturday, 23rd, 2019. Mr. Speaker, we are starting to inform the House that a total number of 57 individuals died that accident, out of which 35 of them were burnt beyond recognition. The remaining 22 identified bodies include four children and four women. It is sad note that some of the burnt bodies beyond recognition were children and breastfeeding mothers. Mr. Speaker, mass burial was held at the JMA Cemetery for the bodies that were burned beyond recognition in a very solemn environment with the assistance of the Ghana Police Service, led by the Kintampo Divisional Commander and the JMA District Police Commander with their team of police officers as well as the hospital and mortuary staff. You heard there the Kintampo North MP Felicia Ije. Let's head to Parliament and Joseph Opokugapu joins us. So, Joseph, what has other MPs been saying about the accident? Uh, so, they've been asking that the authorities enforce various road traffic regulations so that then they didn't repeat of this incident. The speaker himself, Professor Michael Quay, is very particular about the sighting of drinking sports at various bus stations. And he says 
this is something that should come to an end. The Minority Spokesperson on Roads and Transport, Kwame Abuja, uh, made the point that there is for increased resources so that then when it comes to road signs and other markings on the roads, they will be done adequately uh, to ensure more safety on the roads across the country. Now, uh, the Transport Ministry and Ghana Private Road Transport Union, GPRTU, are not committed to addressing road crashes in the country. That's according to Chairman of Road Safety Advocates, Ghana, Nana Ano Amihir II, who claims they are disinterested in deploying technology to alert sleepy drivers. His claim follows confirmation by the police that the driver of one of the buses in the Kentampo accident, which killed more than 60 people, was speeding whilst sleeping behind the wheel. Nana Ano Amihir II says the ministry dismissed a proposal for the use of a cap which monitors the brain to alert sleepy drivers and prevent accidents. He spoke to my colleague, Araba Kumsen. Yes, authorities is a step in the right direction, but we must embrace it with uh, cautious op- op- optimism. Because if you just, just create an authority and you don't give them the tools to work, then what happens? Uh, you're creating a concert party. Speaking of tools to work, uh, we do understand that government has released some funds to the National Road Safety Commission. But let's talk more about the recommendations uh, put forward by the Interministerial Committee. And one of the things they are re- recommending is the deployment of traffic camera systems by the MTTD. How effective do you think this will be? Cameras. You look at our envir- environment here. Three, four years ago, speed cameras would have been the, the best. But now, if you look at our doomso, doomso culture here and our lack of maintenance and stuff like that, yes, you can put the cameras there and just give it six months. It will break down? It will break down. And it will be a total waste of money. It won't work. It will be just uh, a nine-day wonder. But I've got a solution for fatigue. And it's being used by the mines. Gophers are using that technology. Just a cup that you put on and then... The, 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 it's a, just a, 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 a sensor that monitors your brain. So as you're going, the moment you get a micro sleep, the sensor will pick it up and it, it will warn you. It will beep, 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 beep. So it will alert you that you're getting a micro sleep. So it then it warns you, then you, 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 whatever systems. So I went to that whatever. I took a sample. Believe you me, Araba, they were not interested. Who was not interested? Specifically? National Road Safety Commission were not interested. Minister of Transport was not interested. GPRTU were, were not interested. If you don't put road safety interventions in place, gory accidents will expose you brutal. That's the chairman of the Road Safety Advocates, Ghana Nana Ano here the second. Now, President Okufado has retreated his vow to ensure an end to political party militias, addressing the Ghanaian community in Malta on the first day of its two-day state visit to the Mediterranean nation. The president says there are many challenges that the country is battling, uh, which includes the phenomenon of political violence. This assurance comes at a time when the National Peace Council is expected to shortly begin leading discussions between the two main political parties on the matter. President Akufado argues violence has no space in Ghana's politics. The years going ahead, because if, if we are able to project that discipline, the, the, the benefits to us are going to be very rapid and very dramatic. And that transformation of our national economic structure, which is what all of us are waiting for, will be very, very soon around the corner. Now, we have a lot of challenges in our country. You know the political issues that are there, this phenomenon of vigilantism and all of that. These are worrying matters, but matters that I'm determined we should bring under control. Come what may, we will rid our country of some of these phenomena. We don't need it in the new Ghana that we're trying to build, that people use force to determine the politics and the decision-making of our country. We don't need it. We have to have a country whereby decisions are taken on the basis of the force of argument and and the quality of the presentations that are made by the various political actors in the state. I believe that if we all of us agree that that is the way forward, these unpleasant phenomena that we have been witnessing in our country in recent times will also be brought under control. You heard the president of Kufa addressing, addressing the Ghanaian community in Malta. Meanwhile, the governing NPP has agreed to the NDC's call for the National Peace Council to mediate the political party dialogue to disband party militias. A meeting is expected to be convened shortly. Here at Join News, our campaign to end party militias continues. <laughs> Oh, my God.
we want you to know that if you don't disband private criminal militia groups, we will not vote for you because we are scared. The time has come for us as a political class to say that this development is no good for the future of this country. The NPP has been guilty, the NDC has been guilty in terms of these groups. And so both the NDC and the NPP will have to find a way of engaging the base of our parties. The NCC will continue to condemn, name and shame all political parties who endorse, support and or identify themselves with any of these groups until these groups are disbanded word and in deed. If voluntary disbandment by the parties is not feasible, then I will initiate legislation in the matter. Joy News, God bless you. If you were not there, Nana Kufado today will not be making noise about how to disband vigilante groups. We salute you, Joy. And it's the hashtag disband party militias. Now, we take a quick break. When we return in our continuing series of our latest hotline documentary, we'll tell you how the registrar of Wa Bets and Deaths Registry diverted over 220,000 Ghana CDs of monies meant for registration of child bets into his private account. Our review of the registry's records revealed that the registrar failed to lodge a total revenue of 224,760 Ghana CDs into the approved bank account. And in our continuing Ghana Man series, we look at some Akka names with a God factor. Perhaps gospel singers Esther Nyameche and Rabba Nyameche are reflective of their names. While in Koforidia for his housemanship, Dr. Jihadi Osebons wanted to make a financial transaction, but it proved challenging. That experience inspired the Fed to start a fintech company, Techloft, which aims to simplify payment transactions. There was a lot of opportunity for growth. That's what I saw after reading a lot of um, articles, checking online, looking at what's happening in Kenya, looking at what's happening in Rwanda. I saw that there was a lot of opportunity in fintech. Ghana was behind Kenya and Rwanda, for example, in, in that space. So that thinking actually drove me into uh, fintech. A look into the emerging fintech space, the story of Techloft, this Wednesday on the Joy Business Van on TV, radio, online and on ground. It's powered by Joy Business and supported by Ecobank, the Pan-African Bank. Thanks for staying with us here on the Midday News. Time now for sports. Read one. What's yes, in sports? Yes, um, MFA now. The Ghana Football Association special competition is set to start this weekend after the launch yesterday here in Accra. So competitive football on the local calendar for the first time will bounce back in nine months after the Anas documentary on corruption where several referees were captured on tape uh, accepting bribes to influence the outcome of matches. Kujo Fianu, chairman of the Ghana League Clubs Association, Galka, thinks referees have been handed the final opportunity to win back the trust of Ghanaians. And, and it, it, it's it's uh, a window of opportunity for them and they should not allow this opportunity to sleep. This is a time they have to prove to Ghanaians that yes, they've come to the party and now clubs will lose matches to better sides. I wouldn't want a club to lose a match. Yeah, they are human beings. They are, they, they are bound to make uh, mistakes. But those mistakes should not override uh, what uh, we were seeing in the past. Let them come clean. I think the normalization committee spent money yeah. in, in training them. So I think this is the time for us to take advantage of that. You heard chairman of the Ghana League Clubs Association, Kujo Fianu, there. That's your sports for the afternoon. Thank you very much, Ridwan. Now, the registrar of bets and debts at WA, Francis Kupo, diverted over 220,000 Ghana CDs of monies meant for registration of child bets in deprived districts into his private account. That's according to the Auditor General in its 2016 report. Joy News' Kote Nate reports that the amount was released for registration of 10,000 child bets in deprived districts in the Upper West Region. Charging. Unapproved fees is not the only malfeasance workers of the birth and death registry have been involved in. 
the Auditor General in its 2016 report found out that the Registrar of War Births and Deaths Registry, Francis Cooper, diverted over 220,000 cities of state funds into his private account. Our review of the registry's records revealed that the registrar failed to lodge a total revenue of 224,760 Ghana cities into the approved bank account. Plan Ghana, an NGO, on January 25, 2015, released the amount for registration of 10,000 childbirths in deprived districts in the Upper West Region. The registrar, Mr. Francis Cooper, failed to issue official receipts for the fees and rather lodged the amount into a private welfare at the National Investment Bank, WA. Again, the Auditor General found bank transfers of over 175,000 cities by the Secondi Birth and Death Registry into an HFC bank account. Our review of revenue records and bank statements disclosed that a total revenue of 175,860 CDs collected by the registry between March 16, 2016 and September 1, 2016 was paid to HFC Bank Limited, Takrade. However, management could not provide evidence to support the transfer of the said amount into the Consolidated Fund Bank account. Meanwhile, Chairman of Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee, Frank Anodompre, has served notice of drawing the Speaker of Parliament's attention to join his expose on underhand dealings at the Birth and Death Registry to trigger a formal probe into the matter. But he wants the national security to take the issue up as well. The matter at hand, as you have brokered, we have to delve further. I intend to raise this matter before the Speaker. Ordinarily, the committee cannot investigate such matters unless a referral from the Speaker. I also believe that it will not be out of place if the national security decides to investigate further into this matter. Because I cannot imagine why our fellow Ghanaians could be this unpatriotic and could stoop this low. Chairman of Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee, Frank Anno Dompre. Now, belief in deity or deities has always dictated Ghanaian and perhaps African culture and tradition. In some Akan societies, it is common to hear towns with names like Nyamitshre, uh, which means God will do it. Uh, Nyamitsiasi, or God lives. Uh, similar attributes apply to names of people. As part of Ghana Man series, Lava Femmes Kwesi Debra looks at some Akan names with a God factor. Uh, the name Nyameche makes one great and prominent. The name Nyameche confers goodness on the bearer. The person looks at the name and leads a good life. And those were the expectations of a mother for a son 36 years ago. When I got pregnant, she says, I had lots of complications and I thought I wouldn't get him. After delivery, however, everything was fine. My husband insisted he was named after his father, but I opted for Nyameche, meaning God's gift. He's grown up now and working. I wish he became upright and great by dint of his name. The practice of naming children after deities is as ancient as the stars and the planets. Akan's spiritual names, such as Akwesi for Sunday born, was derived from the deity of what Akan's call Obosum Awusi, meaning the sun. Wednesday born Kweku from Wuku, meaning the planet Mercury. It was believed the deities which rule these celestial bodies would confer special gifts and qualities on the bearer. Nana George Apia is a lecturer at the Department of Modern Languages of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Many names that we hear among the accounts like Tigale, Nyama and those things are all names that are given to them to show appreciation to those deities who assisted them in one way or the other to have uh, children when they were in dying need of them. Coming to the names that are associated with Almighty God, uh, it's unfortunate that we have few of them. We have uh, some like Nyamiche, it's translated as God's gift. They have to name the baby 
in such a way that it will show some appreciation to God. Perhaps gospel singers Esther Nyameche, Uraba Nyameche, and pastors Eric Nyameche of the Church of Pentecost, Efia Nyamesem, and Michael Bwedi Nyameche are reflective of their names. Maybe with time, a council learn to generate more names from God, Unyame. By the way, my name is Emmanuel Kwesi Deborah. God is with you and join news. We'll always be with you. Trust Christy Deborah to deliver it just the way it ought to be done. And uh, you were laughing about my translation of Nyameche. Um, let's go to an area that I'm more comfortable. Uh, can you mention Abubu Mafia? Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Excuse me, All what? Right. <laughs> okay, so what are people talking about on social media? Okay, people <laughs> talk about the missing one-year-old baby who was uh, found at, at Kweku Sakura. says, the mother needs some lessons. And at Shizu, Jesse says, we need to advise the parents to keep their eyes on their children too. And this one yeah. is for Getem, who says, why should a mother give her baby to someone you don't even know just because we speak the same language? David McCarthy says, that's why the state should invest in CCTV cameras. Good work, Ghana Police Service. And that's it for the Midday News here on Joy 99.7 FM. And that good news, we brought you about um, baby Mousy being found. And also, uh, we went to Parliament. I know Parliament has offered a one-minute silence for victims of the Kintampo and Cape Coast accidents. So that's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. I am MFR Poe. Have a good afternoon.